and this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm in the shop, sweating it out. 90 degree day down here in Florida. It's only getting hotter. Oh, it's gonna get much hotter than this. This is just a warm up. Got the fans going. Not the big fan. I bust out the big fan in the middle of the summer. When that fan is on, I mean, it blasts the whole room. Let's talk about daily discipline, the mind, body, and soul program. I promote this in every video. I promote this to every single person that I coach and that I mentor. And there's a reason for it, because I live it. It's what helps me, and I know it works. I didn't invent this. This isn't just some kind of bullshit program that I sat around and thought up and wrote it down and figured I'm gonna hustle. This has been going on for thousands of years in very various forms. The mind, body, and soul program is what makes you a man. The mind, body, and soul program is what gets you to where you wanna go. Whether it be physically fit, intelligent, spiritually connected, whether you wanna be rich. I'm not suggesting that all rich people are disciplined. They're not all Shaolin monks. But in my personal opinion, this is how you get there. You want to be successful in any way, it's going to be about your lifestyle. With so many people that want to talk to me about various problems in their life. It could be depression, it could be anxiety, it could be addiction, it could be all forms of weakness. Bad choices and just all kinds of stuff that you could be suffering from. Your daily discipline is where we start. Jordan Peterson talks about this, clean up your room. That's such incredibly good advice. You can start there. A messy house is a sign of a messy mind. I judge somebody when I walk in your house and it's messy and smelly and out of shape. I think that's a reflection of all those thoughts in your head. You'd be surprised how having clean clothes, clean dishes, clean counters, a clean bathroom, that kind of stuff, orderly bedroom and living room make you feel better, especially when you get home after a long day of getting tossed around by the world, by Babylon, beaten down by Babylon. You walk back into your sanctuary, that's what your house should be, and it's an incredible sense of calmness and safety and joy. Your house brings you joy. You can start thinking about everything like this, your car, your office, your little cubicle. Look forward to sitting in that cubicle. For me, so much in life is about my daily program, my daily discipline. And I have a whole schedule that I repeat. I figured out a way to create a perfect day. And it encompasses all the various aspects of the mind, body, and soul program. It also encompasses all my chores, my responsibilities, my family interactions, my social time, my work, all of it. But I incorporate it all. My whole life becomes part of the program. And I desperately want to recreate that same day because it works for me. I don't want a lot of variety. I want to grind forward. I don't want vacations from my life. I want to grind forward every single day with this perfect day. It makes me happy. And it's not a happy, a hedonism happy, a pleasure seeking happy. A, that, that's a, a temporary happiness. And it, sure, it's a roller coaster ride, but you may feel intensely happy, but then you're right back where you started from. No, this is a level up happy where every day you feel like you have an accomplishment, a meaning, and a purpose, and that you're working towards it. And even if you just took one step, it's like climbing a staircase. Hey, I'm only one step further. It's only one stupid little step. What's a step eight inches or something? But at least it's not the step I was on yesterday. The only way to move forward is to climb each step one at a time. So many people want to skip steps. They just want to jump to the top. Can't we just figure out a way to just get to the top? You find out how strong you are in the storm, and I've talked about that, and you know that. 
But what about finding about how strong you are in the repetition? When the only thing ahead of you is doing the same thing, you need to just grind, work, build, study, pray. You need to do that over and over and over every single day. How tough are you then? So many people fall out, they can't do it. And then they just run back and embrace the weak version of themselves as some consolation prize, forcing the world to accept them, becoming more and more bitter as they are isolated and alone because the reality is a lot of people don't want to accept how fucked up and immature and lazy that you are. No, you had dreams of greatness, but you gave up on them because it was too hard. The monotony, the repetition was too hard. People talk about dreaming of excitement, of adventure. How do you think you're going to handle adventure? Adventure will break you, destroy you, traumatize you. You can't even handle doing the same productive bullshit every single day. And sometimes we don't notice. It's like being at the gym. You work out a lot and you may not notice that you're getting any bigger at all. A lot of bodybuilders have body dysmorphia and they look at themselves in the mirror and they think they're real skinny toothpicks. Everybody else sees some incredible athlete and they're just like, oh man, I feel like such a pussy. And you wonder what it's all for. You can't skip steps. You have to grind. So I look at physical fitness, for example, I want those old man muscles. You know what the old man muscles are? The old man muscles is that old guy that's been working, not just in the gym, but manual labor for 45, 55 years. The guy's solid as a motherfucking rock. It's real strength, not just the illusion. So many people want to skip over steps. You see these bodybuilders that they get super jacked off steroids and then you see them after they're done with it, after their careers are over. In fact, we could look at pretty much almost any bodybuilder, not all, there's some that survived. Arnold Schwarzenegger looks like he's doing well, but we go look at Ronnie Coleman and we can name a whole bunch of other ones and there's a lot of dead ones too, some ones that just died in the last couple years. And it's same with, the same with any of the areas. You, you may get into spirituality for a season. You may get all into your Christianity and be a Bible thumper and you got your Bible next to your bed and you're reading it. And then a couple months later, you fall out of that stuff. You, you're not even thinking about it no more. You can't really maintain it. It's hard to. It gets boring. You don't even understand why you're doing it because you're not really doing it for real. Maybe you might be doing all this shit for Instagram or just for an illusion to paint the picture for the friends around you, for your family, for yourself, living a lie. So many people squint their eyes when they look in the mirror. Why do people do that? Because they want to see a lie. They want to see just a, a, a blurred version of themselves. They don't want to see reality. Sometimes we don't see our own progress. But what's important isn't really the destination. This is the, the hard thing to understand sometimes about goal acquisition is that we set goals. Every man needs a goal. You need a point on the horizon and to march forward towards it, to guide yourself towards it every day. And that takes diligence or you'll find yourself way off course. But as a biker, we're, we're, we're in a motorcycle shop right now. As a biker, I got a gas tank right here. As a biker, we realize more of a Zen kind of way to live. See, the biker isn't the motivational speaker. The biker is the lone wolf and he realizes that it's not about the destination so much. Sure, we'll pick a destination. Where do you want to ride to? Let's go to the bar, let's go to the dealership, let's go here, it doesn't really matter, let's go there. It's about the ride. It's not about the destination, it's about the journey. So what I'm trying to tell you in this roundabout way, wasting time, You gotta grind forward every single day. You have to embrace the mind, body, and soul lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. 
It's not just something you're going to do for a minute. This is the rest of your life. And if you don't want that, you don't want that, you don't want the next version of you. Food for thought.